Hi there, this is Carrie Cassidy, Project Camera, Whistleblower Radio. Uh, we have a guest tonight who is Rebecca Jernigan. For those of you that haven't had a chance to look at my website, we are going to be discussing this very interesting statement by M.T. Kesh, who is the Iranian physicist uh, who deals with plasma energy and and plasma physics and it's it should be a very interesting discussion we will probably cover a lot of other things as well but this statement was very far reaching uh and has just been publicized by Kesh on his forum uh it is being translated as i see into other languages it is a basically for all intents and purposes a very strong statement to the uh, powers that be that consider themselves rulers of the planet and um, it, it states that it, he's going to be eradicating things like world hunger and providing free energy and technologies of that sort as well as cleaning up Fukushima his first order of business he says in January so it is going to be a fascinating year <laughs> 2014 and happy new year to everyone hope everyone had a wonderful christmas and new year's time and holiday time if you don't celebrate christmas <laughs> all right so uh without further ado uh rebecca are you there i am and happy new year to you and to everyone that's listening same to you same to you lovely to hear your voice oh, and uh, thank you yours too honey yeah, and I'm very glad to be able to grab you at this time and, and actually get you on the air because I know you're very busy with your own show, you know, myriad things that you are involved in. So it's very interesting. Uh, we are, are dealing with, um, uh, amazing things here, here. And I'm, I'm actually seeing that there's another statement for, from Cash. And for those of you listening, you should go to the front page of Camelot and you will be able to find the link uh, directly over to Kesh's, uh, keshfoundation.org forum where he makes the statement. And if you scroll down, you'll see it's been translated into Chinese and um, other languages. Uh, as I see, it's, it looks like it might be have gone into Russian or Bulgarian at any rate, which looks a lot like Russian. <laughs> and, and it also looks like uh, he is now making a statement about... TEPCO, um, which is, is was obviously involved in in the, the Fukushima situation, and uh, and making some statements about that. If you scroll down, so there's a lot to be looked at and considered at this time. Um, very powerful statement uh, that he's made here. So Rebecca, uh, I know that you've been looking into this since since we first connected earlier today. You, you know, this whole thing, Carrie, is. Um quite interesting you know one of the things that you and I talk about when we we're not on the air with each other we have a lot of uh, conversations and a year ago you know a little over a year ago we spent a lot of time together uh, you know when we were on that trip and we spoke about a lot of different things and you know one of the things that my vision uh, visions have always given me is that there was going to be a change a shift in humanity now, from 2012 to 2013, it's an apropos night, by the way, to be speaking on these topics because we're in a new year, new beginnings. Uh, we we also have a lot of other things that's that's happened. The sun has done its magnetic flip. We just come out of the solstice. We had our sur uh, full supermoon, January 1st. We also have a second one in this month on January 31st. And astrology plays a big part, whether people really want to understand that or not. Uh, because it's all about energetics. Everything is energy. It's all about energetics. And we're going to get into that when we talk about Kesha's work because he talks about it in a very practical application. But it also speaks to the divine order of things, how things come forward. And people like this man, Kesh, and other people who are able now to implement this or have more of a, a probability of being able to implement these great humanitarian things because it's being supported by the shift um, the shifts that are still taking place it's not like the shift is done but the shifts that are taking place because humanity in its, in, its, in their heart and their soul 
uh, Jerry have sp- have spoken it. They're they're you know how many times have you heard people talk about free energy and uh, not having people go hungry and have roofs over their head and uh, being able to cure the ills caused by mankind, such as Fukushima. And you know we've talked about it for all of the uh, negatives that have shown up here. There's always an equal and uh, equal, or at least an opposite side of every coin. Um, and here we have a group of people, and that have been working obviously for many years, trying to assist humanity, knowing that it could assist humanity in such a way that it could transform our understanding of what it means to be human on this planet Earth. And he makes a, a lot of statements. And in, and I read everything and I kind of sit back and I absorb it, right? And what I absorb from this man is he does have every capabilities of being able to bring what he says forward. He has every capabilities of doing that. Um, and there have been so many people, yourself stated, the people you have brought onto your show who have stated... Uh, you call them the white hats that say, you know, there's a whole group of people that are working that you don't hear about that are working behind the scenes that are trying to turn this planet around. Now we have a very open letter from this man named Kesh. Some people believe in him. Some people don't. I believe that the ones that, that don't think that he has the capabilities of bringing uh, this forward are the ones that are so um, rooted, as it were, into the reality of this is the way all things have been and this is the only way that they can be uh, because they've kind of, in a sense, maybe given their power away. But I've been the forever optimist um, and I will always be a forever optimist. Not that I'm not realistic because I am. I'm a pretty down-to-earth person. I don't live with my head in the clouds. I see the negativity going around. But I also know and I've also felt and I've also seen and they've shown me there's all these people that work on this planet trying to bring it into a different level, into a different vibration. And I think we're finally getting there, Carrie. I think we're actually finally being able, we're going to be able to see in a very physical sense in this reality, the ability to bring forth this idea. Nikola Tesla was one of them. Uh, he had this information. There's been many before him that had this, had technologies that had these technologies been allowed to unfold naturally and not be controlled by the few, the world that we live in now, Carrie, would have been very different. I think we would have been way more technologically advanced than we are now. And we, I think we've seen a lot of technology increases, obviously, over the last 100 years. You look back over the last 100 to 150 years, technology has increased a hundredfold, if not more. And it increases daily. I mean, but now we're at the brink of where I think the thing that struck me was was when quantum physics became kind of a buzzword. And you started reading up on, on quantum physics as a thing that that for most people is, is it, they're intangible. So they're, it can be a little difficult unless your, your mind thinks in, in a cerebral manner. But when quantum physics became kind of the buzzwords, when we we really started beginning to see like it was like somebody went into a dark room and turned on a light and it just started flowing and this is where we're arriving to and it's an exciting time I think 2014 has really hit I don't know how everybody else spent the last part of 2013 but I know that it was like I was sitting there waiting for the other shoe to drop and one morning I woke up and I felt lighter and freer than I have and I can't even tell you when, Carrie. There was nothing that actually happened, you know, in the in the physical sense, but I knew something had shifted. Something dramatically had shifted. And then shortly thereafter, a few days after, was when all of this other stuff started coming into my line of sight, physical line of sight. All of these things that people are doing, all the humanitarian projects that are that are being pushed forward, regardless of those that would keep them back. It's a very, very interesting concept, and it goes right along, like I said, 
with the alignments of everything that's going on. And just for your information, I don't know if anybody knows this um, that listens to your show, but tomorrow the gravity force on this planet is going to be less than it ever has. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. I mean, that's very interesting to hear. I'm not sure where you got that information. <laughs> uh, I'll find it for you while, before we get off the air tonight, and I'll, I'll share it with you. I'll, I'll let you know where that piece of information came from because it's very interesting. All right. Well, that that will be uh, excellent, and uh, you know that wouldn't surprise me. I have to say, I've had some interesting dreams lately, <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> And and I just want to say maybe the the reason you're feeling so different is because of Snoopy Island. I don't know if you've heard about this. I have not heard about Snoopy Island. Please enlighten me. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, really. No, I'm not crazy. I don't think over here. Uh, it, it appears someone sent me this, and it it is uh, major news or was major news uh, that an undersea volcanic eruption off the coast of Japan has has sprouted a new island. And I don't know why. I don't know if it's a joke name or what's going on, but um, that's what what the the thing said. Um, and I, I'll find. I'll have to try to find the. Uh, it's it's the the website is called Working Harbor Committee. So. I don't know if this is a legitimate website or a, a joke or what, but this is what they're saying that um, it's part of the Ogasawara Island chain, and this island has 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 sprouted. <laughs> Active lava flow has grown this new island quite quite rapidly. There is a YouTube video. I believe this is on YouTube. I'm just sort of scanning it as I'm speaking here, um, and. So it's an it's it's obviously uh, I, I don't think it, they're saying it's an active volcano. So it's it, as it sort of continues to rise, it's going to change shape. I, I guess this was something of a of a joke because it seemed to the the shape was kind of looking from space like a a Snoopy dog. <laughs> but in any, <anyway, laughs> I like that. That's cute. Yeah, right. So, but the reason I'm bringing that up because I actually had a dream the other night. And I didn't know where I was, but I was in somewhere. I actually thought it was Northern California. So let me say that right away. Um, but I was I was trying to see if I could see what this island off Japan looks like to see if it looks like the island that was coming out of the sea in my dream. Because I saw a piece of land rising out of the ocean. It was in my dream. I thought it was off the coast of California, somewhere off uh, in the area of San Francisco. And uh, it was rising, and in fact, it was going to rise very, very high. And that in my dream, the information was, um, first of all, there was lava um, coming up out of the ground where I was, and I was in a hotel somewhere, and um, we were noticing at our feet that the lava was starting to come through the floors. But this island then started coming up out of the sea, and um, we were close to the coast, and... Um, and it, it it had jagged it had jagged edges you know to, to to it as it came up and uh and the information that that I was told was that this is how the mountains of the earth were formed that they weren't formed you know over millions of years of time like that we think they were but that we instead were told. Up, yeah that that it was suddenly like it, I was actually seeing in my dream, which was really interesting. And so then someone had sent me this thing about the island off the coast of Japan that's coming out of the sea. And I have to say that there's reason to believe that there's going to be some, as we understand them, earth changes of this sort. And so what you were talking about, the flipping of the sun, um, actually haven't read that, although I think that that has been something going on. Um and, and maybe you can also cite a source for that information. But this cash statement is, is kind of along those lines and in keeping with that sort of idea. In other words, that all of this has been rising, if you will. Atlantis rising of a sort because mm -hmm. Atlantis mm -hmm. is, we are the ones coming back from Atlantis. Um, and we returned for, you know, quite a while ago, but Basically, in a sense, we're now coming to the fore. 
And so as Atlantis is rising, uh, that's the positive and the negative aspects of that. <laughs> and and that, I think that's kind of interesting because if I'm not mistaken, and I could be, wasn't there something that just happened up in Alaska that there was some new land that was formed and then it seemed like to me someplace, um, I think over in the Pacific, if I'm not mistaken, also um, a small island popped up as well. Um, and that's, that was uh, late this last year. Yeah. Uh, that's fat. I can't hear you if you're talking. Okay. Are you there, Carrie? Um, okay, I don't know what's going on. I'm, I'm trying to close some other programs in case they're interfering in any way. Can anyone okay. hear me at this time? I can hear you very clearly now. Okay, great. All right, well... Uh, yeah, I don't know what happened there, but I think someone was probably freaking out over over things that I'm saying or something of that nature. <laughs> I w- I've been we've been having some really bizarre occurrences here in the UK, um, and and with respect to Camelot as well over the last uh, let's say two months. Uh, so nothing would surprise me, and you know whatever. But I'm glad you can hear me at this time. So uh, you were talking about islands off the coast of. Um, well, you said somewhere out in the Pacific, right? Yeah, and I can't remember because that, that actually was just like a couple of months ago. Um, and then one out of Alaska, too, that showed up. And there, so there seems to be some, you know, uh, land mass growth. And, you know, again, I, I attribute it to that whole thing, Atlantis rising again. Um, you know, uh, and, and I'm I'm so glad you had that dream because I have to I have to tell you that a few nights ago I had this very odd dream, so this kind of correlate with yours. So, because I was talking about this on my show earlier about shared dreams, even though people don't remember being in each other's dreams, there's some kind of really strange connection going on with people that we don't really understand yet. Uh, but I had a dream that uh, I was sitting with one of my sons, and my sons are grown, and I was sitting with one of my sons, and I was having dinner. And I was in this uh, rooftop restaurant, you know, one of those restaurants where you can see like 360 degrees, right? And uh, we're looking out, we're having dinner, and we're looking out, and all of a sudden, an island just pops up out of the middle of the ocean. <laughs> when And when did you have that dream? Gosh, Carrie, it couldn't have been more than a week ago, so it was within the last wow. week. Very good. Okay, very interesting. Yeah. Yeah, and I was thinking to myself, I woke up the next morning and I was like, well, now that was interesting. I was at dinner and island pops up. I know it was on the ocean because I could tell that what I was looking at was the ocean. Um, so that was kind of an interesting correlation with what you said. And I was like, wow, that's cool. Yeah, very, very interesting. Uh, well, let, you know, just to come and, and let me just say here that we're going to take questions from the audience uh, because I'd like to also hear from the people out there if that have gotten a chance to read the statement that Kesh has made. Um, and I do want to talk about I want to go through it and actually talk about the various aspects of the statement because it is uh, a very powerful statement. And uh, I think it's probably going you know, viral at this time. And uh, thanks to a person uh, who I won't name just in case they didn't want their name on the air, um, who sent me that link. Uh, and I was able to get this information out there. I've interviewed Cash twice now on live broadcasts, uh, actually during the year 2012, one of which was at the very end of 2012, and um, so for all intents and purposes, beginning of when I published it um, on YouTube, which I believe was around the 1st of January 2013. So my interviews with him are pretty unprecedented, uh, in terms of the worldwide community and people that do get access to him, uh, I have sent him another invitation after hearing about this, this statement, uh, today and hope to hear back from him soon, soon as to whether we'll get another interview with him, an update on everything that he is saying here. But, uh, this is a pretty powerful thing to come forward with on the very first day. It was written on the first day of 2014. And, uh, and, and bears a close examination and I want to discuss it in depth with everyone. So, um, so, so with that said, 
Uh, is there anything else, Rebecca, before we sort of dive into it that you want to sort of um, say? And I think there, I'm pr- being people are waving at me trying to tell me that <laughs> we're going to have uh, a break very shortly here. And I know that. Let me also say that you've put the link for Sean to put into the chat at Revolution uh, for people that that had the information about the um, the sense magnetic field. Okay, so that link uh, I think Sean can can copy and paste into the chat, and people will really appreciate that. Um, so I don't know how close we are to getting absolutely to the break, but I'm sure we're quite close. <laughs> yeah, <'cause laughs> I think- yeah, I think we're right on it. And well, I, I'm looking forward to you know, first of all, is maybe hearing some questions too from uh, from the audience in regards to Kesha's work. Uh, I know he's controversial for many people. But I, I just really want to tell people this. I really want to say this. I said it at the beginning. It, you know, we've been told so long that none of this is possible that we now have a probability uh, that that this information that this man is sharing can absolutely come to fruition. And I'm looking forward to exploring some more of it further. I really am. Well, he's writing some challenging statements to TEPCO uh, at the moment, some very interesting uh, statements as well and we can talk about all of that The uh, and analyze uh, there are some political um, sort of underlays mm-hmm. uh, over, over <laughs> um, sort of notations that if you, you look closely you can, you can sort of read between the lines here and powerful statements uh, with regard to how the Illuminati might be wanting to deal with this um, in, in terms of throwing what I call throwing down the gauntlet um, and and so we we do want to look at that as well. Um, this man is no dummy, uh, obviously, and uh, and and a very gracious person to interview, by the way. Um, yes. So so just wanted to throw that out there. Uh, interesting that that a scientist would come forward in this very very public way. So I think we're going to the break, and we'll be right back with Rebecca Jernigan and continue our discussion. Hi there, this is Carrie Cassidy, Project Camelot Whistleblower Radio, and we are talking to Rebecca Jernigan this evening about the very uh, momentous statements made by M.T. Cash, the Iranian physicist who is living and working in Belgium. Uh, and that also plays into the whole scenario in an interesting way. His Cash Foundation uh, is a very interesting foundation and you can go to his website and investigate all the things that he's involved with. Um, I, as have I, as I've said, the information is on the front page of Camelot with links to my prior interviews with him, which were live stream interviews initially and then posted to YouTube and, uh, they lasted for hours. Uh, so there's a great deal of information there that you don't want to miss miss if you are at all interested in who is he, who he is and uh, what he has to say. Um, he has been working, obviously, for a few years trying to get his technologies, you know, in in into the public arena, um, but getting pushback uh, in a variety of ways. And in my interviews with him, you'll hear about that. Uh, and see how he's at this time coming forward in such a way that is different than he came forward back in those days, which was a year ago um, and then more than a year ago. Uh, so I, I did an interview in 2012, appar- apparently in April and in late December of 2012. So uh, here we are in 2014, January, and uh, he is coming forward with a very powerful set of statements about you know, clearing the world of world hunger, uh, releasing new technologies, putting an end to uh, war, and uh, in some ways also sort of um, basically suggesting that if if governments don't step up, that the people will. And that's an interesting uh, statement uh, that he's making. He's also suggested that men of greed can have as much gold as they want. Eventually, they'll get the point that gold doesn't really solve anything, uh, at least um, you know, in the more superficial levels, and uh, and so on. And then opening space up. He's also talking about opening a space up 
to uh, all all worlds and all uh, all all countries really, which suggests if you think about the opposite of that statement is that it's not currently open in that way <laughs> um, for space flight. And so this is something worth looking at. Uh, so there's a lot of innuendo and, and things in, in these statements, and we can actually read aloud some of the statements when it becomes appropriate. Um, but I'm going to let you start off, Rebecca, with maybe some whatever occurs to you in terms of some of his statements. Is there anything that you want to say uh, that, that came to mind? Sure. Let's, let's take a look at the statement where he talks about space travel. Uh, where it's going to be readily available. Now, before I, I heard of Cash and his work and what he'd been doing, I think most people need to understand he's been doing this all of his life. So this isn't like one day he just shows up and says, hey, I'm a physicist and guess what I'm doing. He's worked on this all of his life. There's been, there's been people here that are on missions. This has been his mission, whether he's cognizant of his mission, doesn't matter. Uh, he is, he, he is on a mission. And here we have, what, was it a year ago? Maybe two years ago? I don't know. The time frame is when uh, we announced here in the United States that we were going to go to space and we were going to allow private citizens to pay uh, for space travel, right? So that means that this man's work, because here he is making this statement, this man's work has obviously been known to... The powers that were is what I prefer to call them because uh, I don't choose to give them any more power than they choose to take. Um, there's an alignment here that it's not an accident when you see news articles like that where somebody comes out with something, you know, the NASA or, or whoever it might be that comes out with these big statements going, oh, we're going to, you know, take a mission to Mars or to the moon or what have you, and we're going to allow private citizens. Well, that's already been in the works. It's already happened. It's already been done. In this in this instance, I think that, that what they were trying to do was was to maybe get the one-ups, so to speak, on people like Kesh and certainly Kesh's work because, obviously, if he's making these very, very bold statements, he's got something going on. He's got the ability to do something, and obviously it's not all coming out of his workshop, so to speak. So that means uh, that Kesh has has worldwide access to people. There's people that believe in what he's doing, also assisting him in what he's doing. There's been a huge, you know, we'll call it a uh, underground movement of of the white hats that have seen this coming for a very, very long time. And there were people who have been working covertly in a, in a positive sense for all of humanity. And there has to come a point, Carrie, in every place in history where things change. And I think we're sitting on that precipice of change. And, you know, we, we, we brought it in with the changeover from 2012 into 2013. Now here we are in 2014. So I think that the probability of Kesh being able to get space travel going, we have the technology. We know we do. We know we have the technology to do this. We absolutely do. So why would just the governments, if people just start thinking log logically, why would just the governments have that ability? They don't own every physicist, every bright mind, um, every person on this planet to to work for them and to build their rockets or whatever they're doing. Right? So I think that this idea of him, and I don't know how far off he might be. I know that this is the plan he has implemented, Kesh does, whether he can implement him in the time frame that he's given. He's made some very specific statements about during this time is when this is going to happen. I think he says by the end of 2014 is, um, is when they're going to, he's planning on, yes, by the end of December, we will make sure that there are no grounds for disruption for space travels on a regular basis from all nations on this planet that shall harvest the reaches of the universe collectively and equally. So he's talking about space travel by the end of this year. So I think right. that's just really fascinating when you see the news that came out a couple years ago. They were already well aware of this man, even though 
Some of us may have just now heard about um, cash now, MT cash. Right. Uh, well, you know, and there are a lot of people that are, as you say, very suspecting of his technology. Uh, what I do want to say is that if you listen to my interviews, uh, and he spent, you know, a couple of hours with me uh, live on the air and then coming forward at this time in 2012, I mean, uh, 2012, in uh, 2014 with his very strong statements um, saying he can deliver uh, all of these things. This is, uh, you know, I mean, come on, this is way over the top. So you, there's two really alternatives and probably not too much leeway in the middle of these two alternatives as far as I'm concerned one he's he's a dreamer and he's out of his mind or two he really has something going and he most certainly thinks he can deliver otherwise he wouldn't be putting himself and his foundation on the line in this way um, by saying he's going to do certain things this year and uh, he's even putting down months, uh, certain months, in which he, he says he's going to achieve uh, these certain th- some of these certain, uh, you, you might say, um, goals. And one of those goals is to be able to, to, to cure the uh, Fukushima disaster, which is in some ways maybe, uh, and I know Richard Allen Miller would certainly agree with me, um, an extinction level, near extinction level event that it needs our immediate um, attention. And so he, he isn't falling short, in my view anyway, of um, putting that first and foremost. He says uh, he, he will put an end to it in, in January. So it's not, we're not going to have to wait a year to see the results that we've got this month, January 2014, in which we see we need to see whether he will be able to deliver on his statement. Um, so this is very good. We've got some other uh, goals here listed, one in February, in which uh, he's going to end the uh, production of arms across the world, um, missiles, nuclear weapon, weapons, etc., make them ancient and irrelevant, irrele- which uh, leads one to think that they actually already are, which is very likely. Um from the point of view of the secret space program, no doubt that a, a lot of the things that we think are advanced uh, technologies are actually pretty antiquated from their point of view. Um, in June, he says he's going to uh, make what he calls sustenance, uh, systems that will change air into sustainable food and energy and an energy supply for farming land uh, that no child will need to sleep with hunger um, very strong statement and 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 it's interesting because this man is um, as I say with the two alternative views of him you know one that he's completely out of his mind and, and a dreamer you know and two that he actually can deliver on what he says he can uh, he obviously has complete uh, faith He's putting all his eggs in one basket, which is in essence in what he and his foundation have come across and stumbled across. And um, he's also suggesting, I want to say, that um, as I mentioned before, he's, it's, it's almost as if he is saying if, if, if this doesn't happen, that people will have to become, he says at the very end, um, soldiers of peace and unity before the end of this year. Uh, the word is soldiers <laughs> of peace. Interesting choice of words. Um, and so what we're really talking about is he is not naive to the idea that there is a battle to be had here, um, that there are people that are working against these very things. And if you scroll down to his later statement with regard to the TEPCO issue, he makes um, some interesting statements within there that are also worth looking at, um, indicating sort of um, in a very politic way uh, that that TEPCO are, are sort of, uh, as he calls them, friends who have been misled. Um, <laughs> that that if we are, bro- he says, we are friends and brothers trying to help 
and if a friend is lost in his path, it is the responsibility of a good friend to help correct the mistakes or oversight by his friend. So, um, so th- there are several statements uh, with regard to TEPCO and what's going on in Tokyo and so on. Um, it's fascinating. I mean, this man is really taking the bull by the horn. So he's not just sitting still. He's already working hard, and he has been working hard. If you listen to my interviews again, and I do urge you to do so, you will see that there is a history of this, that he has not wavered um, from his path. And so he he's certainly dedicated that. You've got to give him that. You know, um, this this man, you know, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to probably, you know, say something really strange here to, to most people. But it, when I first read the article and everything that he was saying that he was going to implement, that he had the ability to do, you know, it does sound like to me that there may be some, dare I say it, off-world connections that this man may have. Or certainly um, some information that has been uh, given to him that he's implemented and others that are also working. Obviously, he's not making all of these devices. He didn't come up with everything all by himself. He certainly had to have some help. It's not a one-man show here. Um, it, it sounds to me as if he's had some outside help. Absolutely. In, in well, getting uh, to this point where he's at. Yeah, and that's that's not too strange really because uh if if you listen to again my interviews with him Oh, I had a hard time hearing him. I tried to listen. I, I um I, I couldn't hear it very well, so I, I kept straining and I only got part of what he was saying. So I, I apologize for not uh being able to, you know, talk directly to uh some of the stuff that he was talking about on on the on the interview, the video interview that you did, because it was very it points it was pretty garbled and stuff, and I so I couldn't understand uh, some of what he was saying. Actually, quite a lot of what he was saying. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, perhaps we can get a transcript made of both those interviews, so people listening, if there's anyone out there, uh, and they would like to make a written transcript of the interviews. Um, that would be very helpful for people, I'm sure. He does have an accent, uh, and some people have difficulty with that. Um, I think at least one of the interviews is more easy to understand than the other, so both contain uh, substantial information in regard to him, and I ask a, a number of questions. Uh, and they've gotten, um, certainly people have been able to hear them because they've gotten huge number of views, uh, so that's a good sign. Um, at any rate, uh, you know, it, it may also depend on your own, you know, computer technology, what you've got going over there. Um, but be that as it may, let's just say that what we've got here is, uh, is somebody who is, is, is really, this is the kind of thing that I think the world needs at this time. In other words, he has a foundation. Obviously, he's working with a lot of people that are all well-intentioned on a certain level to want to bring this information, this technology, these technologies forward. Um, the bottom line here is that it doesn't, in the end, matter what you think of him. The fact is, is that people need to start understanding that this is all completely possible and that all the problems we have on Earth are solvable and that it's been a programming uh, by the Illuminati that a mass programming, in other words, to distract people from and make them think that we have unsolvable problems on this planet. That's part of of their whole game. Sure. And uh, they're all about talking about so-called overpopulation, which is also an illusion, um, in my view. And uh, and and remember that that he is also coming from a spiritual, a very spiritual. So when you say you know uh, sort of aspect. So when you say he's having ET interactions, he's actually coming from a very spiritual point of view, I know. Um, and, and from his, his view, we are spirits. And so that, I think that that enhances 
his approach to technology in a way that maybe other scientists uh, may be missing. <laughs> and we know that Tess, Tesla, um, for example, had help, off-world help. There's there's indications of this, and I apologize for the, <laughs> the very old-fashioned English alarm, um, what do you call these clocks that go off, anyway, in the background here. Um, <laughs> sound effects. I love it. Uh, Eddie, just saying that, um, you know, he is coming from a spiritual point of view and that the things that he feels are possible, he's not the first person to think they're possible. They've always been possible. It's just that we need to, uh, to own our ability to recreate this planet and our way of life on this planet and relationship to the multiverses. And this is really at, at root what it's all about. This is a person who is uh, a more awakened scientist than many. Uh, let me put it that way, from my point of view. Mm-hmm. So that's that's kind of key to why he would take the bull by the horns, make the statements he's making. Um, and and I think that people that are dealing with what we are calling free energy, um, there's a lot of different kinds of what we call free energy energy from the vacuum, whatever you want to call it. Um, but it, it brings in, into mind the, the interdimensional quality of being on the planet and that we are not just, you know, there's not just one dimension. There's not just, you know, the things that you think are solid are not really solid and we get into all these kinds of, of discussions. But it, it, it has, Relevance when you look at Kesha's work and you understand where he's coming from. Well, what I did get from him from listening to, um, uh, listening to what I could hear from him is that first of all, I, I, I did get, and he reminds me of a gentleman, by the way, back in my early, early days of doing my show, I had a physicist that I was, um, interviewing. He actually was, was quite a, a regular, uh, on my show in the early days. And he since he had an elderly mother and he he ended up having to take care of her and I I lost track of him and since then I found out that he's 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 deceased. He was a he was not young when I was uh, interviewing him to begin with. He was in his um seventies uh, at that time. And here he was a uh a, a wonderfully gifted physicist and he had written a bunch of papers. He had sent those papers to me on some of his uh, theories and some of his, you know, practical applications and things that, uh, he wanted, you know, me to read about. Uh, they were very fascinating to me. He was a very down to earth, loving, very loving, kind, spiritual, very spiritually connected, higher awareness to this man. Um, so I have this, I have this affinity towards, uh, physicists, uh, a lot of them. Um, I, I've, I've listened to some interviews. I've, I've had a couple of other physicists that's been on the show in the years, and and Kesh was right up there with them, Carrie. As far as that that energetics that they carry, you know that they're connected. You know that they are understanding. They're the ones that get it. They get it. They get that there is there is this connection to something outside of ourselves. To this, you know, whatever it is that you want to look at it as, right? And, 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 and they're such loving individuals and so intellectual, but yet they speak to you and not down to you because you don't have the academia that they do, right? And yet you sense this, I don't know, the only thing I can tell you is I sense this loving presence with him when he was talking. He was very patient. Uh, he, but he was also very passionate, but in this soft, gentle way. And what he was sharing with you uh, in those interviews. Very, very wonderful man. I, I, I appreciate it. I, and I can't wait uh, to see if you can get those transcribed so that I can fill in some of the blanks that I wasn't able to get by listening, uh, you know, to the audio portion of it. So yeah, I, li- I like Cash. I think he's, uh, uh, he's, he's, um, he's a different breed, I guess, of physicist, right? I guess that's a good way of saying it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, I mean, there's, there's something else here which is interesting that I came across, um, and I don't have it at hand, so I'm going to ask you maybe if you saw it. 
um, someone was saying that there's some kind of alignment during this year of 2014 uh, having to do with Jupiter and um, some a, another planet uh, that that hasn't happened in you know a very very long time at any rate, and that it's very positive alignment. Something about uh, certain planets being in certain signs that are there. I don't know if they call them the cardinal signs or their actual the signs in which they're feeling they're most kind of aligned with or something. Um, anyway, not having it in front of me, I can't really explain in detail what I'm talking about on an astrological basis, but I do want to say that apparently we've got a very auspicious year ahead of us, and we'll be right back and continue with Rebecca Jernigan. Hi there, this is Carrie Cassidy, Project Camelot Whistleblower Radio, and we are talking to Rebecca Jernigan and discussing this very momentous series of statements by M.T. Kesh, the Iranian physicist who is part of a foundation called the Kesh Foundation uh, org, and they are located in Belgium. So uh, I, I just want to say that we're going to be taking questions from the audience on the second hour. And... Uh, Rebecca, I, you pay, posted to the chat some, some information about what's going on in terms of the planetary alignments for the year. Um, I don't know that it's necessarily something we want to read aloud, but if you want to highlight any of that, or um, I, kn- I know that it can be posted to the chat uh, for people that are interested in that um, uh, by our producer, if he would be so kind. But do, do you want to have sta- say anything about all of that? Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to give a couple of brief statements because I'm not truly an astrologer. Uh, but what we are is in what they call a, a grand cross. Um, and this particular one is, um, uh, what do they call it? Uh, uh, let's see, I think they actually call it something besides a grand cross, the cardinal or something grand cross. Uh, but they're, they're pretty rare. Uh, it means that there are four planets that are exactly 90 degrees, uh, from each other that, that put a cross up into, you know, out into the cosmos, so to speak. So, we're sitting here with the, um, sun's magnetic, uh, poles flipping. We've had, um, now this is just when the last few days, uh, then we had, um, uh, the supermoon that came on January 1st, uh, also at the very end of January, or very end of December 2013 is when this, uh, Grand Cross, Cardinal Grand Cross, uh, came into effect. Uh, and it's going to stay here, um, the effects of this until the 8th and the 10th of this month. But then it repeats itself again back in the spring. Uh, in April, this Grand Cross does. So it's a, it's, it's an extremely rare event for the way that this thing is going down. So I urge people, if you are interested in astrology, is, is really is to go and look this up and just see how, um, how this thing sits and plays itself out. It's a very rare opportunity and some of the information in here was that this, that it sets up for all of this is, um, changes in weather, there's, there's, uh, breakthroughs in uh, new development. Um, mankind can take giant leaps forward. I mean, the energies, as I stated earlier, support what Kesh is saying that it's a, it's a possibility, could even be a probability that he could deliver what he says that he can deliver when he says he can deliver it. This is the year. Um, and everyone is saying that this 2014 is the year for humanity, and I and I very well could see where these changes, some of them could take place, some of them more rapidly than others. So um, I urge people to go and and really do some uh, research on on this astrological lineup because it's this year it's going to have a really huge impact on the world events that are taking place um, because the super moon also goes into. Um, uh, January 31st, again, very rare. You have two uh, moons in the same month, and both of them are super moons. That's, I mean, it's just a rare occurrence. So this is a rare year 
for planetary lineups, for uh, moon phases, all of that. And then the magnetic shift of the uh, sun. We have just got a lot of activity going on out there, Carrie, for this year, already starting, and it's just a couple of days into it. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, fascinating information, I have to say. Uh, and, yes, that was what I, I guess I had been reading about, and uh, thank you for, for clarifying all of this. Um, basically, I, I want to say that it, it is obviously going to be a very um, momentous occasion uh this year altogether and i think perhaps uh maybe bringing to the fore some things that people have been hoping for and working towards for a very long time in other words th- seeing things come to frui- fruition for change and that would be very interesting um i i do want to say that uh that that if anyone has any questions please do feel free to call in and um, as usual, I don't know our call-in number just right offhand, but I'm sure that um, our very generous uh, <laughs> producer can put it into the chat where I can can you know say it out loud for people. But aside from that, you can also uh, Skype into Revolution, and I believe it's Freedom Screen, something like Freedom Screen something. And um, I think it's Freedom Screen. I'm, I'm searching for it. I know yeah. I wrote it in there somewhere. And then uh, also you can obviously put it into the chat if you're part of the Revolution chat. Then uh, put your questions in the chat, and I guess Sean or someone who can help him will grab them and, and post them here so that we can actually get access to the questions. So call-in number is 310-421-4053. Or you can Skype Freedom Screen, and that's S C R E E N, and the number two. So I guess I'll repeat the phone number three one zero four two one four zero five three. All right. Uh, just just so everyone knows, I have notified Richard Allen Miller, who has made Fukushima uh, and the the near extinction level event uh, that we are sort of facing with all of that and the radiation that's been released at least from the point of view of, of some people that um, to to Richard Allen Miller that Kesh is is making this statement uh, that would be a very interesting meeting if I could get Richard Allen Miller and Kesh on the same conversation um, mm-hmm. in, in a live venue that would be really quite extraordinary I, I think uh, Richard Allen Miller is also a physicist For those of you who don't know, and I have interviewed him uh, a number of times, actually, uh, both on my radio show and then also on video. So that is a Camelot interview, and he's he's quite a brilliant man who is working, by the way, with Navy intelligence. Now, there is um, reason to understand that Kesh is not making these statements by himself, and he's also... um, he is is putting into this sort of the way he wrote it um, some heads up for the powers that used to be as as Rebecca would like to call them and what I would say is um, well let's just call them the New World Order um, and uh, and and so he is he's he's really throwing down the gauntlet and that it's it is interesting that he manages to put that in there. Um, in such a way that he, in the in the phrasing of the statement in general, in other words, he is not stating this in just a bland, kind of naive sort of way. In other words, he's fully aware that he's going to get pushed back. back. And uh, if you listen to my interviews, you'll know that we had discussions about that pushback uh, a year ago, and the, then the, the eight months or whatever it was prior to that uh, interview... Um, in which I talked to him about the pushback he was getting then as well. In other words, he is not a man who has not already encountered a lot of pushback. Um, so he has been working to, he's have been having meetings with uh, heads of state, uh, executives of companies, major companies around the world. He's a person who is dealing in the world stage on a daily basis. 
Uh, so this, these are not naive statements, um, and, and that should be taken into account. Uh, and so this is, is just a very, very interesting and, and it is, I think, important that he's doing this at the beginning of the year of 2014. Yeah. Very interesting choice on his part. If you look at the actual statement, he, it, it is dated 1-1-2014. At 11:48 p.m., so it was right before we, I guess, went to uh, one two. So he made sure to get it out there under the gun uh, on the first day of the year, and uh, obviously Very that's astute. interesting. Yeah, choice on his part, and you know, being Iranian, uh, he he may have uh, been using some some other sort of background information maybe astrological and maybe otherwise to give his his statement of intent force out in the universe and you know this is the kind of thing that that there's no reason why other people out there can't do the same thing in other words we have some very well-meaning individuals who have perhaps been working in the dark or the shadows or whatever you want to call and uh, i think this sets a certain example and I want these people to start talking to each other personally. Wouldn't that uh, be the greatest thing? <laughs> so that the that, that that the great minds that are out there working on a positive level for humanity aren't just working individually and with their own small groups. Um, I think it's time that we start unifying those efforts that that people are making to make these changes. And there's no doubt that um, I'm sure that. Kesh could use help. So anyone listening to this broadcast, please be aware that um, I do have access to direct email with Kesh. Um, he has responded to me in the past, so I assume that he will get my emails at this time. Uh, if, uh, obviously, Echelon or some other organization out there that's doing surveillance doesn't see fit to interrupt that flow, uh, but if or there are people out there that would like to assist Kesh in his his efforts to free humanity from the the long uh, the yoke of the uh, the Illuminati that have been holding this planet in uh, in a in a prison sort of structure and keeping us back from the changes and the the new technologies that that we should have had access to quite some time ago and the the other ways in which we might be developing as well, uh, certainly getting freeing the planet from world hunger, giving free water to the planet, um, the clean free water that, that is within our reach. Um, all of these are, are very laudable statements and, um, and well within the reality of what it means to be human on planet Earth, of which we are far more than we give ourselves credit for as I say in my <laughs> statement um, so so uh, Rebecca do you have any thoughts about that are coming to mind or, 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 or things related to Cash and what he's been saying here or even um, whatever, whatever you might want to say well you know um, first of all I, I, I want to address the on my show tonight I had people talking about uh, Fukushima I want to address that a little bit um, we we uh, been there's been a lot of press about and yet it's been subdued at the same time. So I think that whole thing is kind of interesting that it makes it look like it's um, mm, uh, under the carpet, but yet it's also being talked about uh, the Fukushima disaster. Right? Um, it, it's it really is a uh, potential of having a lot of Issues and, um, but the agenda, so to speak, of, of those who have been kind of controlling, uh, this planet for so long has been to keep people, uh, in fear, in chaos, in servitude, no matter what that servitude is. Um, the servitude is, is that, um, in this case for Fukushima is that, uh, only they can fix it. Um, they're they're working diligently on it. You know, we heard that in the BP oil spill. How long did that take? It never did get cleaned up. Um, we're, we're consistently hearing all of this stuff. Um, David Icke says it best: problem, reaction, solution. 
they create the problem, wait for the reaction, and then they come forward with the solution. But if you notice, the solution never really cures anything. It does not cure a thing. But yet, we know for a fact that all of these things that are detrimental, that are being detrimental to the environment, to the planet, um, have the ability to be eradicated. But yet, they take no measure to do that. Well, that's not the, the purpose of um, the, you, you call it the New World Order, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the purpose of them is, is to not make this, this planet a, a, uh, wonderful planet. It is to make it a planet of, uh, having, uh, everyone in servitude, um, in a, in a lesser state of being. Uh, I mean, this, you know, Carrie, this has just got so f many far reaching implications. We could get into, you know, topics like on the Vatican and, you know, what's being held down there. All of this information has always been available to humanity. It's been the few who have kept it away from the masses. That only the elite um, few that have they that that they have figured that they're the chosen ones for whatever sick reason that humanity can't have this, and so they've created this world so that they can ride their egos, uh, do the bidding, and keep this uh, planet in a place that this planet was never meant to be. My own guides have spoken to me on, on more than numerous occasions about what this planet was supposed to be like. They've shown me repeatedly, repeatedly. And I, I keep getting these little breaks in the, um, you know, in, in the scenario when something shifted and kinked and, and people succumbed to the fear or to the, I, I like to call it programming, because it technically is. If you tell somebody, something, the same thing over and over again repetitively, eventually they begin to believe it. And so this is appealing back, if Kesh can do just even one of these things in this year that he has made these statements of, Kerry, just one of these things, uh, it opens up the door to break the chains that bind us all. We're all sharing this planet together. Whether we like each other or not, doesn't matter. We're all under the same umbrella. We all live here on this planet Earth. Every single one of us. It doesn't matter. And I think we all are entitled to. It's a human right. And I want to get into that because we're you, the whole idea behind clean water, right? Um, Nestle's has come out with, first of all, is they're, they're, they bought up the rights to all this water. Now they've made it where um, they're making these these totally irrational statements um, saying that water is not a human right. Just incredible. Just is it, incredible. I mean, you just, you just, your little brain goes on fire. I mean, I just, <laughs> you know, it's just like, what? What? Okay, well, let's take all of your water away and see what you think. You yeah, know, it's okay yeah, because they're, st yeah, they're standing on the other side controlling it and they're making these decisions that, well, nobody else can have the rights to this water. Because it's not your right to have this water, but it's mine because I own it. I bought it. I'm sorry. Yeah, when you're I, gone, who I, owns it then? I think the Native Americans had it right when they said that, you know, humans do not own the land. They do not own the, the water, the plants, the, you know, the, the sky, the air we breathe, etc. I mean, you know, this is, is just, it's, it is, goes so much against the grain of what it means to be human, uh, the way these companies operate, it's just, it's just mind boggling. Uh, just incredible. You know, it is. And, and, you know, getting into that total illogic of all of that, uh, you know, the idea that, you know, uh, water is not a human right. Um, I, what I think is really funny is when they're, you know, the, is when they come out with making these imaginary lines up in the sky, about whose space it is, whether it's the United States' airspace or whether it's the Russians' airspace or the Japanese' airspace. And you're like, really? Really? You you, you have these, wh where's the boundaries at? I mean, where did you create these boundaries in space and the air above us? You know, no land or nothing. That this space belongs to somebody because it's over somebody else's land. I'm like, okay, whatever. And And I always thought it was really interesting is that um, people that uh, move to uh, places where uh, haven't been inhabited before. We'll, we'll give the idea here of uh, when 
the pilgrims and all of them uh, came over. Uh, they infiltrated the United States um, in, in masses. This is not to say anything about the Native Americans because they were already here, but it was it was the it was those people who decided that uh, they owned um, twenty thousand acres of land and they were going to sell it. Nobody sold it to them; they just owned it. But now it becomes their property, and if you want that property, now you have to pay for it. Uh, and and Alex Collier said it best: it's the only planet where you have to pay to live on it. It's the only planet you have yeah, to pay exactly. to live on. Yeah, it's What's crazy. That? It's absolutely crazy. If you if you really think about the way this whole thing is set up, it, it's just you know, it's crazy. It's just absolutely crazy. Um, you know that humans have to pay to live here and pay to eat and pay to you know to to. I mean, it's just and we and not to mention the fact that they're messing with our air and our water and and so on and poisoning it and Genetics. and change terraform forming the the re terraforming the planet so that another race incoming race can live here uh and and we are 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 sort of made to become extinct or at least some of the the um the humans out there that can't deal with the changes that they've been making that include fukushima by the way because this is a terraforming exercise sure. don't be deceived uh about that this is not, I, I know it's referred to as an accident, but I'm sorry it's not, it's not. an accident. No. Uh, no. it was a targeted hit upon Japan, for one thing. <laughs> and I've got, we've got a lot of statements and a lot of information that substantiates that. And, um, by the way, I am working, uh, I do want to get Jim Stone back on the show, the NSA whistleblower who is, I believe, still down in Mexico to talk more about, um, the, the sort of update things. Uh, that he knows as to what's really going on uh, behind the scenes. And he was one of the people who blo broke the story about Stuxnet and uh, Fukushima, and the, uh, the, which Stuxnet being created by the Mossad and U.S. Um, technical uh, individuals, techies, whatever you want to call them, um, wh who work for the, the governments, uh, and, and that this was a... a a very targeted hit upon the island of Japan and and the Japanese people. So this is this is known. I've done a numerous shows on this, and um, and the information is out there. Uh, as they say, the truth is out there. Um, I also want to bring up something really quickly here that uh, I just saw this very interesting television show. And I guess I'm going to have to tell you on the other side. Of yeah, the don't forget. I'm going to write it down. Bring it up. Yeah, <laughs> very interesting. Uh, and, and so we'll be right back with Rebecca Jernigan. Hi there. This is Carrie Cassidy, Project Camelot Whistleblower Radio. And we're talking to Rebecca Jernigan about the very momentous statements that Kesh, the Iranian physicist, has made uh, on the first day of this new year, 2014. Uh, just before the break, I was referring to a television show that I want to highly recommend, and it's it's in two parts, and it took place, uh, they actually, I guess, put it on television a year ago, and then it just disappeared off the face of the earth, except that it's on Netflix. <laughs> and so I, I want to highly recommend this to people, because it contains so many... Um, Elements of of what's really going on on our planet right now, and put into a fictional so so called scenario, and um, it's called Delete. So if you haven't seen this television show, you must go on to. Um, and I don't know whether they call it a movie or a television show, so I don't even know. Uh, it's only two episodes, but they call them episodes, so I assume it's television. And it was it's called Delete. It's all about an artificial intelligence that gets out of hand and decides it wants to do away with humanity. <laughs> and um, if you if you are aware of of all the the revelations by Snowden, which are only the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the surveillance society we're living under, uh, then you may know that we have a major AI that uh, very likely came out of at least in some ways uh, Promise Software, uh, depending on how you say it, Promise, Promise, 
um, and then uh, possibly some other uh, AIs that are out there and that there is something going on here on this planet in which we are being monitored from a quantum physics level uh, in terms of surveillance. This, this, These are elements that uh, Snowden is not talking about. And this all works into this situation that we're finding ourselves in and, uh, and, and that we may indeed be able to break through, uh, ultimately with the help of, of various new technologies that will allow, allow us to, uh, to actually work against or counter this AI. And, um, if this was, if I was in that television show, I'd probably be targeted at this point. <laughs> I'm just saying that. Uh, but, but be that as it may. <laughs> <laughs> and tempting fate over here. I'm going to just continue. And uh, I do want to say that it's interesting because Kesh, in his second statement, where he's talking about trying to contact and spending hours doing it, uh, TEPCO, and uh, he said he was talking to the people, some people in Tokyo yesterday, trying to coordinate his actions in keeping with his statement that he's going to be trying to clean up, basically, the Fukushima disaster the uh, the results of it, which means cleaning up incredible amounts of radiation, uh, stopping a meltdown, which is still in progress, etc. So it's a huge, huge undertaking. And uh, what he does say is, to the Japanese people and to others out there, please have additional servers available if we get blocked or overloaded. Our Japanese bloggers need to do their job of translating as well. So... I just wanted to reiterate that and 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 ask if in if the Japanese people uh care at all for their own people as well as their island and their their chances of survival in the future and uh and as well as the rest of the planet because we are all being affected by Fukushima as you may know and and so please do uh do honor his statement that that you do translate the statement into Japanese and also um, assist him in 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 blogging and getting the word out about this show, this radio show, as well as uh, any other statements that that Kesh comes up with on his forum, which is at the keshfoundation.org, and the, and the links again are on Project Camelot. Um, I'm noticing it now the statements have been translated into Spanish as well. Um, so, uh, so, so, so these are things where, where he is, um, he is doing this kind of, 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 the, or people are helping him, assisting him already in translating things for him. Um, so we are going to, um, it, it, it is interesting that, that, that all of this is happening. In other words, if we begin to see how working together can actually turn things around on the planet and make it, uh, impossible for the, the, uh, New World Order to put what they would like in place, and we can also get rid of all these, um, sort of psychotronic and, and frequency weapons, et cetera, um, that that uh, that are interfering with our our live lives and uh, our happiness, our right to liberty and freedom here on the planet. This is a very crucial time. Uh, Rebecca, your thoughts? Well, you know, Carrie, as I'm sitting here listening to you, you know, one of the things that uh, people have to be aware of: should these um, actions of uh, Kesha's foundation and and everybody who's involved implement these. That means that we, as uh, a race, as as a, as humanity, have to change our thinking as well to go along with this. Um, we have to begin to think in a different manner. Uh, many people are still under, uh, kind of under, if you will, of the the spell of of the greed and the ego, and that's going to take a little bit for people to. To let go of that, um, I, I'm over here. Re, every time I read his statements over again, I get something else from these statements that he's made. The interesting thing is, is that when he talks about the water, um, and see, of course, I've uh, I have lost that because it's it's I've been up and down in this thing like sixty times. Um, 
but he talks about the water and about how he's going to deliver clean water to everyone. That alone, do you just that thing alone? Do you realize what that would do to the people that don't have clean water? We don't understand that as much here in the United States because what comes out of our taps appears to be clean. Of course, it's very contaminated, but it appears to be clean, right? We have a lot of still um, some very some still some very nice water. Uh, places here in the United States, whether they be rivers or lakes or whatever, that are still clean and not very contaminated. Um, and, and so we aren't used to um, living in places where the water is filthy, uh, carries all those parasites and all of that. Uh, there's some places that don't have water anymore. Uh, that alone would change the face of humanity. The Fukushima thing... And, you know, this gets back into, I don't know how many things now. That you, I've lost count, truly, Carrie, of how many mm, incidences, right, that have come to pass. Um, well, look at the Chernobyl incident, right? All those years ago, um, they've been doing some uh, documentaries on it, on what it looks like today. It's a wasteland. So we have learned nothing from the Chernobyl disaster if... The powers that have been in place all of this time are continually building this type of technology for the purpose of supplying electricity and power to the masses. And yet, we go over here and we look at what's happened over here to Japan. I agree that it was a targeted hit. I think most of these quote-unquote disasters are actually targeted. They do that, problem, reaction, solution, you know, oh, well, this is safe. We've got it figured out. We know what happened. But we're going to build some more because now we can build them safer. People buy into the lie because they don't want to believe that their governments or officials or people are lying to them. And yet they repetitively do it. And yet, and then they repetitively fall back into the, oh, but they're fixing it. They fixed it. And yet here it goes on and on and on and on. That's good programming. I have to admit, that's good programming. And when you talked about the, um, oh, you called it the, uh, qu- I'll call it the quantum quantum eavesdropping. Um, y- y- you know, the ability to manipulate from uh, man- manipulate energies, ma- manipulate the minds of 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 men, especially those that are power hungry or aren't paying attention or what have you, um, is is a very interesting concept. And it would be interesting to find out if Snowden would ever come out with some of those more, uh, uh, less, the, the more obscure, I guess, pieces of information, um, of, of what's, what's been happening on this planet. Um, but when I look at this, I want to get back to the Fukushima thing. I know I'm all over the place here. I want to get back to the Fukushima thing. Um, this is, hmm, how do I want to word this? Um, this event um, is one of those things that it's it's kind of one of those um, what do they call that when they set it up if you 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 have an uh, an operation uh, a covert operation going on and you have a, a plan that it self destructs if it doesn't work right if your plan doesn't go right then you can you can enact a self destruct plan right. That's what Fukushima feels like to me. Like this is the self-destruct plan. If the New World Order loses its grip, they'll they'll release the Fukushima thing, and then it won't matter anymore. But what they don't understand is that that there are people out there that knew that this kind of uh, self-destruct mechanism was put into place, and as soon as as they're not as well known, obviously they're not seen because they've been working behind the scenes for a long time. For years, I've been talking about that on my show. But, you know, everyone's looking at all this negativity and all this stuff that's coming up and all of these terrible things because the news is just a plug and plug and plug and plug that. They get you very used and desensitized to all of that. Um, but in the background has been people that go, this is not right. This does not work. People that have these internal inspirations personally, they get epiphanies of going, oh, wow, I've been, you know, haven't been acting right. I haven't been doing right. I'm going to turn over a new leaf. And they do, and they begin to be more kinder and gentler or whatever. This happens to people all the time. 
Then they begin to wake up, and once they begin to wake up, they go, wow, this is really not a very pleasant place. What have I done? I've allowed this to happen, you know, individually as well as collectively. This Kesh guy here, um, being able to bring forth, like I said, if he if he accomplishes just one thing out of this list that he's got, uh, you know, that that's, that's a huge jump for humanity. It's a huge jump. It means that we no longer have to be prisoners on this planet in the sense of, I don't mean just in the sense of being able to make the great escape and, you know, fly around the universe or anything, but we have escaped from the clutches of that energy. We're, the, the chains are weakening. They're, they're, uh, the binding is weakening. And this planet can actually be turned into a place of what it was supposed to have been like, what it was intended to be like when it was, you know, habitated all them millennia ago, um, for sure. Um, he mentions in his in his letter here, um, with the delivery of advanced technology unknown up to now, we shall put an end to hunger and wars. The technology that he's talking about, I'd be very very interested when he when he focuses on that. And I was listening to the video interview, the last one you did with him. Is he talking about what he was talking about in that interview? Uh, well, I'm sure he is. Uh, he, you know, it is interesting because he tries to discuss the technology he's working with. And what I get out of that is that there's almost the language we have is not suitable to be able to convey, um, the nature of the technology. In other words, we're using the language from the 3D reality to try to describe something that is uh, going into 4D and beyond. So it is difficult when people want to describe, whether it's holograms, as I have had guests on my show as as recently as uh, uh, last week on, or the couple weeks ago with Jerry Avalos, who's dealing with holograms uh, and and others that are dealing in these areas, uh, we're talking about free energy, what we call free energy, which is energy from the vacuum, that we are all electrical and uh, en- energetic beings, that that's what we're made of, that this this stuff, this soup that we exist in is all energy. Um, the energy is so profound in our environment that, all we, all we need to do is translate it in a sense, convert it from one form into another and it becomes usable and it is in essence unlimited from all points of view uh, for use on Earth and even going uh, interstellar as a matter of fact, mm-hmm. as the secret space program has proven. <laughs> uh, uh, although not to, to uh, uh, not obviously known to most people, but the point being is that uh, that we are living in a different kind of a, a universe than the one that we thought we were, and that this there are words. In other words, it's limited right. in in trying to describe uh, interdimensional reality and multi dimensions when you're using basically this sort of three D language that simply doesn't allow for these descriptions. So. I think that that's part of the problem. Uh, you know, obviously, as a scientist, he's also talking to me and my audience, um, trying to use maybe non-technical terms to describe what it is they're doing. On the other hand, there was at that time, and this is a year ago, uh, I believe an effort to keep some of the technology that he's working with and the concepts um, hidden from uh, certain, let's say, less than friendly eyes. And so I don't think he was being as upfront as he could have been uh, simply because he was still at the stage where they were protecting that information. Now, if you read, again, what he's describing here, he is basically also saying that he's going to, um, in essence, in in the the statement that follows the first uh, statement that he made on his his uh, forum, he's saying that he will 
if if he can't get any um, help from Tes- uh, TEPCO and from uh, from Japan in and by the way I know that the Japanese government I I remember this clearly has told its people and I would believe it was Richard Allen Miller who researched this um, ha- ha- has made it illegal to discuss uh, the the levels of radiation in in fruit and vegetables etc in in Tokyo uh, if if not the entire country in other words people will be thrown in jail as terrorists if they discuss levels of, of, of radiation. I mean, it's just beyond the beyond what is going on over there. And, and most of the stuff is, of course, not even brought into the news. So, so you have to look at that. But, but he basically says he will turn on Skype cameras and reveal to the entire world how the technology works and how he plans to clean up that mess if they don't give him access on some level. So, that is in his second statement. If you're you're listening and you want to go research what he says exactly, I don't have it right in front of me. I have to. I have it in front of me. He says he's going to devote the ninth workshop to Fukushima, and uh, it's a it's a clear roadmap of implications of our and other technologies which can stop this contamination. Then we will open the cameras on Skype in our lab and live broadcast in that session. How to make the systems and materials to react, uh, retract the contamination in water and land, and we will teach and show you how to do this step by step. Right. So, I mean, it's about time that somebody is stepping forward uh, with regard to Fukushima because this is such a critical area. Uh, obviously, this is now, and there's no time to waste, and he he's making this his first order of business very wisely, I may, might say. So. What it will be is move, counter move, and we will see where this all goes, uh, obviously. Um, as the show is winding down, are there any other areas that uh, come to mind, Rebecca, that you maybe want to talk about um, as an intuitive like myself? And <laughs> here's I love this, the bell. <laughs> the British uh, clock in the background. Sorry for this. Um, but at any no, rate, I do the love it. hour uh, is approaching, as the bell <laughs> indicates. <laughs> and uh, are there any statements or I- information that you want to convey that you've, you know, that have come has come to mind? You want to talk about uh, this coming year? Well, the the thing that I the statement that I would like to make in regards to Mr. Cash and his um, and his very well laid out plan and all of this information that he's shared. Um, I believe that he has some backing. I believe he has, um, and for the lack of a better way of saying it, he has some power behind him uh, to be able to pull this off, um, at least some of it, and we'll see what happens uh, after January 9th. I'd be interested in a follow-up from you, Carrie, uh, as far as whether or not you were able to uh, get in contact with um, uh, Kesh uh, after this uh, workshop. Um, and see what might have transpired or if anybody else has it that would be a a very interesting thing Um, I have a really good sense about this man that um, he just works in in realms that um, most people would would, could not comprehend um, even as I look at it and again you stated that very succinctly when you said we don't uh, have the vocabulary and we don't and I've said that before there's we're missing so much vocabulary to to describe what we know, um, and I think there's a new language that will actually be created, or at least new words or verbiage um, to talk about this these new this new world that is beginning to open up that we've all sensed. You've sensed it. I've sensed it. Many other people have sensed it. We know that it exists, but it's like how do we we work from here to get to there? How do we accomplish that? How do we make it understandable? to those that may not necessarily see the world the way that we do or the universe or the different levels or dimensions uh, the way that many people do, a lot of people do. So I think 2014 is just going to be a huge year for many people, especially those who are on an awakened path, um, who are part of these humanitarian projects that are going to be coming out of the woodworks. I really feel like that. Uh, some at very local levels and then some like Mr. Kesha's doing on a very large scale. But this is the year for humanity. 
Uh, so if anybody is really wanting to make this place a better place to live for themselves, for their family, for their future generations, uh, this is the time to get involved. Get involved with credible, uh, uh, integrity-filled organizations. Uh, we can all do a part in all of this and make this make this really, really come to fruition. The more energy that we put into it, our mindset, what, I, I, no matter how little or how much, uh, it all makes a difference. It really does. And that's what I would wish for for humanity, for all of us, for this beautiful planet that we live on. This is truly an astounding place to be. Okay. Uh, well, thank you, Rebecca, and thank you for being my guest tonight. Uh, this is a very, as I've said before, momentous occasion. I, I think it is important that a, a, a world-renowned uh, scientist has come forward talking in this way about uh, correcting all of these problems on planet Earth and how they intend to to make this a reality this year and then lining it up uh, with a month-to-month sort of blow-by-blow blow, uh, how they intend to do so. So um, we will see what happens next and uh, and I'm sure that he and the people that he's working with have seen evidence that convinces them that what they have in hand uh, and have come across in terms of of the technologies they've been dealing with that they can just change the paradigm on pro- on planet Earth. Um, there are many other people, inventors worldwide, who have been tapping into these energies and are aware of them. So this is not something that other people have not been involved in. Uh, this is a, a person who is obviously very driven He's got a team behind him. He's been working for several years, um, many, many years in, in various areas. And he does have, um, you know, the, the, his training, his scientific training behind him, as well as apparently some, some very strong spiritual, uh, basis for what he says. So, uh, that's a good, a good, you know, that's a well armed, uh, group that we have on in our camp to try to change this this and turn this 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 ship around the ship planet earth as it were and uh and then we'll see what what happens i do know that there are plenty of uh white hats within the military within militaries around the world um people acting covertly in agencies etc who could assist this man and many others to make this a reality so I would encourage them to come forward and change the paradigm that we've lived under once and for all on earth thank you again, Rebecca thank you uh, Jerry have a wonderful new year everyone what are we doing live echoes of eternity